When I first returned to Rutgers after a three-year stint at the American Academy in Rome, I did a fair bit of head-scratching. I asked, is there any way, really, to convey the experience of living and teaching and learning in the Eternal City in a Rutgers or any U.S. classroom setting? My training is in ancient studies, specifically Rome of the Republic and Empire, but for the last few years I've mainly been thinking about other later Romes of the Renaissance, the Baroque, the 19th century, of Mussolini, of the 1960 Summer Olympics. But more specifically, I've been meditating on an amazing part of Rome's history within the walls, mostly but not completely lost, the Villa Ludovisi with its famed Casino Aurora. Since 1621, the same families maintained this spectacular private enclave in the center of Rome, the noble Bon Compagni Ludovisi. I was able firsthand to follow a conservation campaign that the head of family, Prince Niccolo, and his wife, Princess Rita Bon Compagni Ludovisi, launched for the Villa Aurora. Here, Princess Rita uncovered about 150,000 pages of documents lost to sight for generations. It's a lot to take in the history of the family. They include Prince Niccolo's direct ancestor, Pope Gregory XIII of the Gregorian calendar, also the brilliant patron of the arts, Cardinal Ludovico Ludovici, and his uncle, Pope Gregory XV, who canonized the first Jesuit saints. But eventually it came to me, with the Bon Compagni Ludovici, i develop an on-site, online course, case studies of the popes and their interactions with the city of Rome. Buongiorno, or buona sera, as the case may be. I'm Corey Brennan. I'm teaching the course Papal Rome and Its People, 1500 to Present. In fact, I'm here in Rome. We're filming a number of episodes on location, all meant to take a look at the history of the papacy over the last five centuries, picking up where the Borgias left off and uh, following the narrative thread through the uh, Papal States, their dissolution, the rise of the modern Italian nation, and then the creation of the modern Vatican State. An ancestor of mine whose portrait here was appointed as a pope. It is not a fresco. It's the only oil and plaster uh, ceiling painting that Caravaggio ever completed. Um, and it wasn't discovered until 1968, incidentally. Two immensely talented Rutgers undergrads did all the digital filmmaking, Sean Fewer and Adam Naurat. Over 11 intense August days, we interviewed the prince and princess, documented the Casino Aurora, plus hustle to any number of locations in Rome. I even roped in my brother for logistics and still photography because there was a lot to photograph in just the Bon Compagni Ludovisi archive. It starts with the 1400s and sheds much new light on this papal family who were also sovereign princes of the Holy Roman Empire and shows their links with other European royals. Among the primary sources that this online course features are more than five centuries worth of commemorative papal medals. Hundreds come up for detailed discussion in the lectures. We also try to harness the veritable whirlwind of historical newsreels from the pre-Vatican II period that Italy's Cinecittà Luce organization recently has made public. This is Pius XI in the extraordinary holy year 1933-34. The time does seem right for such a course. It's an extraordinary moment for the papacy in general. For a start, one has to go back to the 15th century to find a situation with two living popes. But that's not all. It was very fortunate that the author of our main text for the course, Anthony Mahanlati, offered to speak at length on camera for us about the families who made Rome. That's one of the strange things about this, uh, about this, this, this whole city block is that it ends up being uh, the product of one family, but it began as the product of two separate families that eventually merged. And today, the most important part is unquestionably the, the, the Church of Sant'Ignazio because the Collegio Romano, which used to be the main Roman school that taught every young Roman man who wanted to learn. Um, Thousands. Latin and Greek taught here for free, as it said over the front door. Uh, it was a revolution. Well, I won't claim that this on-site, online course marks a revolution, and it certainly isn't free. But what I think it does represent is an attempt to pull together a dizzying number of historical strands and individual case studies into a hopefully 
cohesive and compelling whole. For the course, I'm thrilled that I can leverage Rutgers undergraduate talent as filmmakers, researchers, teaching assistants, to draw on new evidence, new technologies, and to collaborate closely with the papal family that is generously sharing more than a millennium of its own history, architecture, art, and artifacts. There's lots more to be said, but I'll leave it at that.